Welcome to Common Sense Live, a show where we welcome a group of professionals with different opinions into our studio to see whether they can learn from each other. Each episode, we will tackle a new topic with takes from guests and a live studio audience. Let's talk about it. I think uh, a big part of work fulfillment um, in general, I think it comes to work-life balance. Don't know what you think about that, but I think um, it's finding the balance between being able to do the things that you like in your spare time, whether that be you've got commitments like looking after your children, um, mm -hmm. maybe commitments outside of that where you might be part of certain social clubs or maybe you've got commitments in a church that you might go to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's being able to work and be able to do those things at the same time. And I think with the nine to five thing, a lot of people feel like they're stuck and by the time they finish their shifts, they're completely tired. I've done nine to fives before um, and over time, so I know how that feels. I don't know about yourself. Yeah, um, I think something with nine to fives is to kind of, or something that's helped me understand them is a bit going back to the origins of nine to fives. Mm -hmm. um, so they came obviously before the industrial revolution, or during the industrial revolution, where everyone was working in factories, yeah. and it was like fifteen-hour days, and then it went down to. 12 hour days, 11 hour days, 8 hour days. No. And when we look at society now, a 95 isn't a 95 because mm -hmm. we have people in corporate who are doing 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, and you're getting paid to work a certain number of hours a week, but the expectation is that you should be willing to work longer hours. Yeah. Um, so I kind of think with the 95, it's not just 9 to 5, but it's that, like, f are you? enjoying this job that you're doing yeah. because ultimately if you're an entrepreneur you're not doing nine to five you're yeah. doing 24 hours on the clock you're thinking about it when you wake up you're thinking about it in your nine to five you're thinking mm -hmm. about it when you come back you're doing stuff i think i saw a video of someone saying oh um a day in the life with me come with me on my nine to five and then my five to nine mm -hmm. so it's i think with the nine to five is just i think the word nine to five is not the right term sounds um, like a 30 year prison sentence yeah <laughs> exactly um <laughs> And it's the way you see it as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, would you say that there is fulfillment in a um, nine to five? Yeah, um, definitely. I think there can be fulfillment in any career path. It just has to be the career path that you mm -hmm. want to take on. Yeah. Um, again, there's some people that have a passion for um, medicinal science and they want to be doctors because they actually find a passion and fulfillment yeah. in helping people and curing the sick. Mm. Um, but obviously on the other side of it, you have the you have the standard that's been set from past generations on a mm. traditional thing where it's like, yeah, you must get a nine to five job, a mm. good secured paying job that's got pension benefits, yeah. that has healthcare benefits. So I feel like a lot of people, um, yeah, they're divided on that. And because they're divided on that and they don't find passion in what they're doing, it's like, yeah, they they don't find no fulfillment at yeah. all. No, I agree. I think you can definitely <clears throat> find fulfillment <coughs> in whatever career path you choose. Mm -hmm. And I think when you look at the education system as well, you're set up to go into that. Yeah. So you're trained to study, to get more so back in the day, maybe not so much now, mm -hmm. um, but it's go to school, do your GCSEs, you need your GCSEs to get a job. So do your GCSEs, maybe do an A-level, mm -hmm. maybe go to uni, once you're at uni, grad schemes, internships, like it's all setting you up yeah. for this and there's not much leeway to think about, okay, what do I actually want to do mm -hmm. and how can I do that? Um, That's actually true. I yeah. think the system oppresses your creativity yeah. because you're just stuck having to recite stuff mm. or being able to copy off a board. So you don't really, as a child, you're more playful. Mm. You'd want to try different things. You'd see something and just don't know why you like it you just do it yeah. and I feel like the whole yeah structure of school college university yeah. it kind of strips you away from that yeah um, I guess that individualism in terms of like just yeah just being creative and yeah. and seeking yeah and ultimately again going back to what the purpose of a nine-to-five was it was to get people working because essentially society needed workers mm -hmm. um, and so when I think about jobs now it's kind of like the jobs that they're pushing forward i don't know i think this was a rumor that i read about a couple 
months ago, how they're cutting funding for creative subjects. Yeah. And it's kind of like there's the way that the government or society looks at certain career paths mm -hmm. influences the way we see them as well. Mm -hmm. um, so when I think about where I was at A-levels, thinking about going into university, it was study the STEMs. Mm -hmm. Or if you're not going to study the STEMs, study humanities. But if you study humanities, what's the purpose of that? What career are you going into? I love into? humanities. Honestly, yeah. like, I, lo I do love me some numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, my undergrad was in accounting, but I, I love... I mean, my master's is now in theology. Mm -hmm. And when I say that to people, it's, okay, so how is this going to benefit your career? Yeah. But why does it have to? Why, mm. does, why does what I'm studying have to be, how am I going to work? Because mm -hmm. what if this is my passion? And what if, I don't know, I want to sit under a tree and read a book for the rest of my yeah. life. Like, yeah. Yeah. what's that got to do with anybody yeah. other than me? But, yeah. It's true. I think another thing as well that I was thinking about in terms of this topic is... Um, this whole, <laughs> I have my own personal opinions about this oh, one. Um, but this whole idea that everyone needs to quit their nine to five. Right. Personally, mm -hmm. personally, I don't believe in that. I don't think it's a, oh, leave your nine to five because mm. this world can't run if everyone works for themselves. Yeah, because you're going to need to get someone to work for you. So if you're leaving your nine to five, someone's going to do a nine to five for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, when I hear things about, oh, you know, I don't want to work for your boss. Um, why should you work for your boss? Why should they tell you what to do? I'm thinking, um, okay. And would you would you agree with me to say, because um, I believe this anyway, but would you agree with me to say that the blame is social media? Oh, yeah. A space where yeah. many opinions yeah. are allowed to run rampant. Yeah. Um, I think social media has been a great tool mm -hmm. because through social media, a lot of jobs have come out. Um, especially through the pandemic, mm -hmm. like a lot of when you think of lo a lot of like lifestyle content creators, mm -hmm. not even just lifestyle, but like content creators in general, yeah. it's on social media that they're putting out their content. That's what's paying them essentially. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good. But also, I think when you see so many different people on there and essentially the people you're watching are these content creators, it kind of sometimes it can be dangerous. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you kind of forget that oh, you have to, your alarm set for 6 a.m. Yeah. to go to that job you yeah. have on Monday. Um, so, yeah, I think social media has definitely played a part positively, but also slightly negatively. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I 150% agree. Uh, that's why I brought it up. I think um, it's dangerous because, as well with content creators, not all of them can be telling the truth sometimes. Mm -hmm. Some people could be faking their lifestyles. Yeah. Um, yeah, they can literally just be renting out an apartment mm. in Canary Wharf and then you think that's what they're doing, like they're a full-time trader or something mm. like that. Yeah. Um, and they're really not. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think, it's, I think it's dangerous, but at the same time, there's always a flip side to it. Um, I think it can help inspire and spark something in, mm. in, in somebody. So someone that might be working a nine to five, sitting in an office, um, doing a job that they don't like, out on their lunch break, they might be on social media, and there's someone that they follow, someone that just popped up on their feed, mm. and maybe, yeah, they're chasing their dreams of being an artist or a videographer, yeah. and they're like, oh, I would love to pick up the camera and go traveling and just shoot and stuff. Mm. Maybe should I do that? And that might spark an urge to take action. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, there's pros and cons of it, but in terms of quitting the nine to five as well, um, I think you need to assess what stage you're at, and Definitely. ask yourself, what am I trying to achieve? What is this going to actually allow me to do? Mm. I don't believe in terms of quitting it without having a plan. You need yeah. to have an active plan. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I'm one of the people that quit, quit. <laughs> and five. Yeah. Yeah. I think with, so I've had, mm, I haven't had that much experience in nine to five. Right. I think I've done a lot of things for myself, which mm. has been a blessing. But in a nine to five, one thing that I would say is that you can find fulfillment in the nine to five in one period and then not find it later on. Mm -hmm. um, so when I came out of uni, the first job that I had, I, I was fulfilled in that job. Mm -hmm. I felt like I, I was where I needed to be, doing what I needed to do. And then as soon as the clock started ticking after a couple mm -hmm. of months, I said, mm -hmm, it's time for me to yeah. now exit. Now that's not to say that, you know, we should be, whenever we feel like it's time to go, we should go. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually reading, Oh, no, I was watching a video um, and this man was talking about how um, back in the day, a nine to five was 
you know, like you stay in that job, you progress, you make mm -hmm. your way up. Whereas now millennials are job hoppers. Yeah. Like if you're not happy with it, you hop One onto the next. One to two years I'm out. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. you're seeing these CVs and you're seeing, there's a lot there. Um, and I don't, I mean, I guess you can also share what your take is on that as well. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think especially now where there's a lot more job opportunities yeah. today because of globalization, we have access to people internationally, mm -hmm. social media. Um, I think the welcoming of creative arts as well. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that someone can say, you know, I'm an artist and, you know, that, that, that's a positive thing. It's yeah. not something that's looked down upon, maybe not so much in mm -hmm. African cultures, but we're progressing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I lost my child of thought. But my point is, there's, there's, there's a time and space for all these stuff. But also, like, what would your take be on in terms of, do you stay in your nine to five? And then once you've got the, the idea to leave, leave? Or is it kind of like, find the right job as opposed to make the job for yourself? Um, I think you could do two, two things at the same time. Or, that's a good question. Um, Yeah, um, it's a hard one. Yeah, you just gotta pay the job that you wanna do, um, mm. or you gotta seek and just find it. Um, whether that be a nine to five or just quitting, but I just believe, like I said before, you just need to have a plan. Mm. Um, and what what is it that you're trying to achieve? Like, what is it that you want to? give you a reason to wake up every morning. Mm. I think once you kind of figure that out, it just makes your next steps easier. Yeah. And I feel like that's why society is kind of where it is today with a lot of people dealing with mental health mm. issues and whatnot, because one, yeah, they go, they're picking up their phone in the morning. Mm. You're looking at people living a life that you might possibly want to live yeah. or in spaces that you want to be in, but you just don't know how to kind of fully do it. Mm. Um, I think I lost my point of what I was going to say. Um, yeah, you, you just got to not look at that. You got to yeah. block that out and you just got to say to myself, OK, cool, these are what some of my interests. Let me just get out there. Yeah. Let me meet new people. I think networking is a big key as well. Mm. Um, but I feel like also in terms of networking, I think being stuck in a nine to five sometimes stops you from being able to get into different, take being confident enough to go into different spaces because you're mm. so used to maybe like an office environment yeah. and the conversations that you're normally having are with people about their kids mm. and maybe what one of their family's members did on the weekend yeah. at a wedding or something like mm. that um yeah but again yeah you just gotta just take mm. i think with like you were talking about social media like yeah. everyone just it's it, it's a one-sided story you mm. put out what you want people to see so unless you're putting out the nights you're shedding crocodile tears mm -hmm. and the nights where, you know, nobody's bought anything, no one's booked you, like no one will know that that's your story. Yeah. Um, so if someone was saying, you know, like, hey, I want, I want, I want to ex explore, um, first of all, be realistic. Like, have you got bills to pay? Mm -hmm. So if you quit, who's paying those bills? Mm -hmm. Because in a cost of living crisis now, it's not that easy to leave a job and get back in. Um, and so you want to be, you want to be, <laughs> you want to be wise and explore. Um, I think start with where you're at. Mm -hmm. So I would always say like, what options are available to you in the workplace that you're at? What can you, what type of things can you do to branch out into that area that you're trying to explore? Mm -hmm. um, so for example, for me, I love every, anything coaching. So in my workplace, if I want, well, and I have done this, is I, would, I went to my manager and asked, you know, like, this is actually what I want to do. What, like, what is there available to me? Um, and he gave me options. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm grateful because I have a, a good manager that yeah. has his best intentions, but there are other managers that genuinely just want your flesh and blood to do their <laughs> job and that's it. Um, so I think one, be wise and consider your options. Like, if yeah. you have bills to pay, sort that out, but... I'm also a person of faith. Mm -hmm. So I also do think there's, an, there's risk. Like sometimes you need to take that risk and unless you take that risk, you won't know. Um, so yeah, I'd say assess, assess your situation. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately the person that's, you know, coming to ask this question, I'd like to think that they have a good head on their shoulders yeah. um, and can make a decision. So I could, I'll just 
yeah, I'd say assess your situation where risk, where the risk is high, return is also high. Mm -hmm. So if it's a high risk that you're willing to take, then also, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, basically. So, um, yeah, the, the advice that I would give is kind of like, I guess, things I've taken on myself. Um, like one thing, me and one of my business partners, um, we ask people when they come to us and they're talking about, I'm trying to do this within the music space or entertainment space. Mm. Um, we always ask them like, for example, straight up, like what's your survival number? And for survival number, it's like, okay, cool. What's the essential bills, for example, that need to be paid? Is it just mm. a phone bill or are you living at home? Like, what is it? If that's three, 400 pound, mm. then it's okay, cool. You need to be able to know that you can cover that to give yeah. you a peace of mind because obviously it's harder mm. to hustle when you yeah. can't pay your bills, isn't it? Yeah. And then the it's other thing really is, anymore. okay, cool. Have you assessed your network? Yeah. Like what contacts do you have mm. like in your vicinity like that you can actually lean on, tap on, tap into? Mm. If you don't have that, then there's no point. You should be focusing on using the spare time out of your nine to five yeah. to kind of develop those networks. Mm. Because um, one thing I've realised, what will keep you going is if you have a, a long contact list, because you've always got different people to meet, mm. you're always going to meet someone that's going to take you on to the next yeah. stage of the journey or give you the next opportunity. Um, mm. But you need to, I would say to them, follow your heart. Mm. You know what I mean? Because if you look at the most successful stories, they've all taken risks where, yeah. do you know what I mean? Maybe they were in like 10 grand debt. They took out another loan just to get this product off the line mm. or they took the risk of I don't know flying to a country where they don't know anybody mm. and then getting off the ground yeah. so I think faith is a big element yeah. of it um, and um, life is unpredictable it do you is. know what I mean it's unpredictable yeah. so you can kind of put all of these parameters in place but um, anything can just change the moment yeah yeah i like what you said about spare time because i think that taps into discipline mm -hmm. um if you have a nine to five well a nine to five is basically a seven to seven because you include the time you're waking up you include mm -hmm. the time you're traveling um and so thinking about like what could you do in that time if mm -hmm. it's reading on your commute and um, maybe listening to something um planning like i think Sometimes with the nine to five, the argument is that there's not enough time to do what you want. Mm. And I actually think there is. In fact, you probably have more time when you're doing the nine to five than when you've quit and you're mm -hmm. doing everything because you're trying to do, you're trying to allocate everything into time. Mm -hmm. I'm a very like structured person. So yeah. I like to know this is when I'm doing this. This is when this is happening. This is how long I have to do this. Um, so something I always say is, you know, like, what can you do? If it's Saturdays, what can you do on a Saturday? Is it filming on a Saturdays? Um, and even about like networking as well. Mm -hmm. I'm an introvert, so I, I, you I am as well. You, so, so. Them yeah. social ne yeah. networking events. Uh, I'm registering last minute, and yeah. if if it's open, <laughs> fine. If it's not open, I'm not complaining. Yeah. Um, but I think networking <clears throat> is really important um, because when you're trying to, because essentially when you're an entrepreneur, you're building something. You can't have just yes men around you. You can't mm. just have people be like, go for your dreams, because if you go for that dream and it doesn't dream, mm -hmm. then <laughs> something's gone wrong. You want to have people that are there to speak words of like truth to you. Yeah. So if, if there's a risk you want to take and it's a big risk, you need to have people there that are letting you know, listen, mm. I'm trusting that you're making the right decision, but there's a cost. And when you have those people around you, when you have those networks, you'll find yourself in the right rooms mm -hmm. and you'll continue making your way up. Um, so yeah, that's something that came up when you said. Okay, so what do you think the effects are then on chasing a dream that's not currently dreaming? Yeah. On like your partner, family, like the financial strain, the emotional strain as well? Um, yeah, so I think it's about where you're at in the journey and I think it's about where you're at in a relationship. Obviously, for example, if you're married and then you're just starting a dream or going on a new entrepreneurial journey and you've got a bigger amount of responsibilities, maybe you have a kid, two kids, you've got a house, a mortgage, I think that's going to be a complete strain on your partner. But I think at the same time, if you're uh, younger and you don't have a lot of responsibilities, um, and maybe your relationship's still early, then it's not really much of a burden. 
unless mm. you're maybe one of these new generation couples where it's like you've got to pay the girls nails you've got to pay <laughs> for hair and whatnot if you've got those yeah. responsibilities then it's obviously yeah. going to be a stretch but um at the same time i think it's about having an open conversation mm. about where you're at yeah um so for example my relationship super open about everything mm. talk about where we're at okay cool what are the next steps to kind of or what's the plans or what does the next two years look like what are you going to do so i think mm-hmm. communication is super important because mm-hmm. um, again if you don't have communication mm-hmm. and you're doing your own thing mm-hmm. um, questions will be asked yeah do you know what i mean they will be asked and especially if you say you're doing this and doing that but there's no fruit of it mm-hmm. um like i know a lot of people for example where they're saying that they're doing some sort of business or but you can't see anything it's just mm-hmm. all talk Mm. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of women nowadays have to deal with that because a lot of guys do sell dreams, mm. um, but there is no fruit. Mm-hmm. Oh, but thank you, women. <laughs> women too. I guess you gotta you gotta have discernment. Yeah, it? no, yeah. I agree. Um, yeah, I think like you said, communication is really key, um, and I think something that Mo said earlier about partnership is really important because if your partner is chasing something there's an element of your if i if i was with somebody and they had a vision and they were running after that and it wasn't bringing the cash dollar in Mm -hmm. um then it's there's a responsibility on me to also try and partner with him on that vision um can i see where this is going even though the the physical evidence isn't bringing in fruit um but then also question for you where would you call it quits well I mean, <laughs> where will I call it quits? I, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's, I think again, it's like you said, the stage of relationship. Um, I think if I was married with somebody, it's, I can't, I, I, I can't call quits. I mean, unless I'm forcing you to leave. Um, whereas if I'm with, I'm not legally bound to you. <laughs> It's a bit different because I'm, I'm, if I'm with you and I'm not married to you, I'm with you with the intention of being with you long term mm-hmm. until death do, do us part. And if I can't see that I can trust you with my life, I guess this kind of link, links to traditional gender roles. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's just me. If I feel like I can't see that you as someone who will be looking after my household, and I'm not just talking about financially, but just in terms of like, emotional and spiritual maturity, then I can't submit there. Oh, I was just thinking. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it depends on where you're at and yeah, if you can partner with them and see that. Uh, cool. Thank you for that amazing conversation, guys. Um, it was really insightful. I really, um, I think you mentioned the point about nine to fives and how people nowadays it, with social media and content creators and everything there's been sort of a glamorization of entrepreneurship and yeah i really agree with that and i find it quite frustrating that nowadays people sort of demonize nine to fives when like it, most people have do nine to fives and there's it's perfectly normal and it's, it's seen as like oh especially as a man it's like oh if you want to be your own boss you should like you know be an entrepreneur I remember seeing something on the breakfast club about it I can't remember the guy's name but he's he was just like oh like if you're a man and you think you're a man why would you why would you work for someone else you know be your own boss and I just find it frustrating that there isn't like there isn't a respect for nine to fives as a legit source of income um and yeah that's what I wanted to say really hi thank you guys that was an amazing conversation um just kind of rebuttal on you I'm kind of on the opposite side um, where it's like, I'm glad that people are showing that there's other opportunities out there rather than nine to five. I'm someone who has a skill set, a load of skill set that I've learned on myself as well as everything I've learned in my life. And when I do look for jobs and I look, look at nine to five, there's nothing out there that suits what I, what I long for. Um, yes, it's been glamorized in the wrong way, um, but I think there is opportunity out there for everybody, for everyone to be, um, who they want to be in whatever skill set they have. 
um, nine to five suppresses a lot of people. Like I went out to you when I was at uni, it was depressing to think of me going to work nine to five for somebody else. Um, I would still do it for the for the vibes, but <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> just for the vibes. But um, yeah, I think it, it's been a great opportunity to, to be able to see there's the, there's the opportunities out there where you can you can take whatever skill set you've learned and and build build something for other people, not just for yourself, but for other people. And I think that's that's where it should root from for, it's not for yourself. This is where the social media is going wrong. It's, it's, it's a belief of it's for myself, but it's not, it's for other people. It's for other people to, to come on board or to, for you to join somebody else. So I think, yeah, that's my point done. Uh, definitely being on both sides, uh, entrepreneurship and nine to five, definitely prefer the freelance life. I think it also works for me as a woman. You know, we talked about, you know, gender roles before. We spoke about how, you know, in different parts of your cycle, you have more energy. And, you know, when you are a freelancer, you're able to be more attuned to that and kind of, um, navigate your life and timetable your life around that but when you're going into a nine to five every every day and week in week out you kind of have to go with the cycle that's more suitable to men kind of thing um it doesn't mean we can't do it it's just that it gets harder in some weeks than others um, um but my point really was about um taking strategic risks and i'm somebody that's made very um silly decisions in the past and i would say that i finally understand my parents in in a sense of um find a bit of stability like they're not saying don't pursue your dreams but they also they've been in this world longer than us and they understand the adult inside the adult in pepe <laughs> that i'm now seeing and i didn't understand that when i was younger i just thought you know my mom was a hater like <laughs> you know why are you you know all up in my grill kind of thing but i i definitely say kudos to the creatives that have kind of taken strategic risks so i hear stories of people that have been like okay i've been in my nine to five i've saved up for six months mm. and then in the next six months my bills are covered but i'm gonna go for this thing like super hard mm. and you know there's success stories like that in that sense so i would say that for anyone watching really um take strategic risks and then maybe to you guys as well do you have any tips for um people who do want to quit but how to do it with sense you know yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think to Toby's point about loads of people want to go into like nine to fives because they think, uh, or, or leave their nine to fives rather, because they think are uh, like being an entrepreneur is like glamorous and all that kind of stuff. I was fortunate enough to go self-employed at 24 and that was way before than I, I always wanted it, but it was way before than I ever expected. But what I didn't realize was I didn't necessarily have the character that was actually necessary to, to sustain that. And it's, and it's kind of a situation where if you put yourself, if you put yourself in a situation where you are literally up against it, where you're having to fight for your, for your daily bread almost, <laughs> it's gonna show you. <laughs> you're in the wilderness for real, like, no, like you, you actually are. So, <laughs> nah, let's, let's keep it real. Like there's been times, there's been times where I have literally gone to Audi just trying to buy um, a loaf of bread, yeah? Tell me how, the, the guy at the till paid for my bread, G. Like, no, like, no, we thank God. I told you, innit? I told you before, like, but for me, that was such a humbling moment because at that time, I actually was working with a, a big client. It was just my first month. So that's, that's the reality of entrepreneurship. There's going to be times where you've got money coming in, but the distance between the last paycheck and the next paycheck, do you get me? So there's a lot of realities around entrepreneurship, which if you don't have the character to sustain it, it's gonna really put you in a very compromised position. You'll hate, be hating God, you'll be hating the people around you. You'll hate the people that let you even go into that space, but a nine to five is a good place to be in. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll say that right now. It just depends. Last thing I'll say is like, when you're doing your nine to five, like if you're going into a job, it helps decide what you want to do, or you, it helps if you decide what you want to do. But when it looks like your career, it's about who do you want to be? And that's the big difference where a lot of people are picking nine to five based on what they want to do, not who they want to be. So, yeah. Yeah, to the point of um, just the conversation, one thing I've recently, I recently came across and I, I cherish, I stumbled upon a, a diagram and I've been preaching about it since forever, since I found it, found it actually in this room. And it's, um, an, it's called Ikigai. Um, yeah, you, you know, the Japanese, uh, Japanese concept for um, um, 
for purpose or finding being. And I found it really helpful for myself. Um, basically, it's a Venn diagram and it has four intersect, well, four circles and they all intersect. And in the middle is where you find Ikigai, which basically is purpose and meaning. Um, the top part of the circle, inside of that, it says, what do you love? Then to the, to the left of it is, um, what are you good at in terms of like, I guess skill set at the bottom what can you get paid for and at the right it's um what do you think the world needs and basically within those intersects so between um what do you love and what you're good at that's your passion between what you're good at and what you can be paid for that's your profession between what you can be paid for and what the world needs that's your vocation and i found like vocation typically basically means ministry in a sense where i know there's a lot of like believers in here and then you've got um um, what what the world needs and what you love, the crossover is your mission. So in you being able to adapt all four things, so your passion, vocation, profession, and um, mission, if you can find a sweet spot within all of that, you'll feel fulfilled. So even if you go down, even if you go down a nine to five route and you have a profession, at least you know your pockets are satisfied, but then you also have your passions that aren't lying to waste, and then you also have a mission. I know you you also have you know, so it's like I, I really um, advise people to check out that diagram. It's called Icky Guy, and um, again, it's it's helped me a lot to kind of just distill, like, because I had just had so many things I wanted to do, and it was just so scatterbrained, and I I didn't know. I'm very passion led, but again, the reality is you need to eat and money, so that really just helped me just to sink my my view. Yeah, so. Yes, great conversation. Um, I think the point was briefly made about education being oppressive, um, and I kind of understand the sentiment behind that, but my, in my opinion, um, I don't think more so that education is oppressive. I think we underestimate the power of primary socialization, the power of community and mindset and all these things because I don't know whether that's because I've grown up without both my parents present in my life, but I think that the education system is doing well. Changes could be made, but I also think that there's a place where um, people need to know their sense of self and identity. And I think that when we speak about working, doing stuff outside of our nine to fives, we're talking about people that are very bold, people that are very creative. And I feel like those things don't really just come from education. I think it also comes from the upbringing that you have, the people that you have around you, um, your sense of self, sense of identity, um, positive mindset, growth mindset, all these things. And I feel like in our society, we really underestimate the power that um, positive mindset or the way we think, the way we see ourselves and all these things, um, the power that it has on us. Because I believe the more we have people who know themselves, have a sense of self, sense of identity, the more we get to thrive in education. But not only that, I think we'd have a lot of more pe a lot of people, a lot of people basically being bold enough to take the steps of creativity. Therefore, I don't think education is the problem. I think you can go through the same um, traditional route of education and basically still be doing what um, other people are doing. So I think it's about your upbringing and those they have around you. But that's just my own opinion.